Okay, I have a new sound pack and this one is just made out of bass. So what I did, I invited a friend and I recorded a whole session just so I could have some chops. I'm not really a, a good bass player uh, when it comes to the keyboard. I don't play bass. All the basses that I create come from the keyboard. But you know, obviously if you want to get real, really nice grooves and you know, a real bass sound, you know, the only way I can really think of is just to invite a person in and record a session and then use those cuts to, to create some bass melodies. So that's what I did. I invited my friend Gonzalo Alegre and you can see that footage right now. So yeah, we played about a session, an hour, and then I went to cut the whole thing. And uh, yeah, these are the bass samples that I have. I mean, there are so much cuts in here. I think about 900 cuts, over 900 cuts. And you know, you can, you can actually browse through them right there. Let me show you that. Yeah, so it's called Bass for Days. And uh, yeah, you come with some loops inside that and it comes with some chords. This is really nice. And a bunch of cuts. Not that I'm going to stop making basses from synthesizers or whatever, I'm not, but uh, just to have this and to work with this, it's really nice and just gives me a different input, a different way to start the beat. And that's what we're going to talk about as well. So the pack also has some slaps in it. So I just took as much as I could, slaps, chords, voicings. Uh, you know, uh, just melodic bits, everything that I could work with. It actually influenced me on the way I'm making beats as well because now I'm starting with the bass instead of starting with samples or the beats and then samples and then bass. I'm actually going straight for the bass now, just finding a melody that, that I like. So because there are so many cuts in here, what I do is go to the program edit and make sure I set this to mono. So. So I can play uh, all the chops I want and those will cut each other. They won't play after I hit another pad. So you put that in mono and you can jump between, between pads that way. Uh, I, don't actually, I, I don't necessarily finish the sample. You know, I might just want that end right there. So what I do is I cut that end. That might be my cut right there. So always searching uh, ways to use the sample or to change it if I need to. If you see the master right there, it's actually seven semitones down. So I made a beat, I'm going to show you the beat and how I made it as well. A few months up to now, I'm, I've been starting the beats with some drums actually. So I have uh, a pattern that I use. I have this pattern. It's, it's just a pattern that has a hi-hat, a kick, and a snare. And it's, it's just a really, it, I kind of use it as a metronome. So, you know, instead of having a metronome, I actually have a beat just going boom, bap, boom, bap, and just kind of helps me to start. Uh, it has a little bit of swing, but after I put the bass on it and after I put the samples on it, what happens is then I change the snare, I end up changing the swing of that, just shifting notes. So it's just a way for me to get, it's like a metronome really. Uh, 
So that's the way I started. And after that, uh, I went searching for some bass. And this isn't it. So this is it. So these are my three chords that I decided to use. And as you see, I don't actually finish the, the note. Uh, and that, that's really the small pattern that I used. So I have the pattern right there as you see it. I would never be able to do this if I was playing the synth. There really isn't much here. I have some uh, compression. I have the air strip right here. It's just uh, I got the EQ a little bit on the on the mids, pumping up the mids. If I take it off, it sounds good already. I'm still not too sure about that swing. I think I still need to shift a few notes there. I probably will, but I, I enjoy the way it's sounding already. So it just gives you a groove straight away once you use a bass like that. I've always started the beats with the drums or with the samples. Now uh, I'm starting it with the bass, which is, it's, it's pretty cool. It offers you things like this. It, Kind of search for that unique sample that's going to match that and you know it's not really it's not hard to find a sample that can match a bass line just you know it's it's not really hard because you have such a rich bass line with a lot of melody you don't need like a crazy amount of samples you can just drop in one or two samples over that and it just sounds good already so let me show you the rest of the beat you heard that there were some samples in the back that's uh, a sample those cuts I shared with Patreon as well. So that's that artist right there, Fred of Pain. I think that's how you pronounce it, Fred of Pain. So I got a bunch of uh, cuts from that. I just threw that over the bass line and that was it. I also have uh, a plugin running in here. So that's the chord right there. That's running in the back. That's the electric plugin. I just changed a little bit the attack there and these features that we have here on the side. Add a bit of noise to it and that was it. And that just goes well with, with the bass as well. So very subtle in the back. But if I take it, you'll probably notice it. Then you also hear uh, something in the back there. That's a guitar with a big delay on it, using the fusion delay. Uh, this comes as well from a recording session with Leo. He recorded a guitar for me as well. Mostly everything that I'm doing now is using samples that I uh, recorded from a friend or from people that just come, uh, that I invite. I have a trumpet here as well. It's just a guy that came here to the city where I am and he was actually playing at a jazz festival. So I just, you know, I, I contacted him, brought him over and I had a session with him here as well. So that's what I'm doing most of the times now is inviting people with different instruments and just letting them play, letting them just jam away, improvise. And then I cut everything and use it. Uh, still use samples because I love sampling. I love the, the way that samples sound. Uh, so I have that. And that it's all the way to the left. Just have it on the left, on the right channel. 
Okay, so after that, uh, I went ahead and actually created a different sequence with a different bass line. So the same principle, really, we go in and just search for uh, bass lines that match with the one I was working with. And, you know, I came up uh, with this bass line. Uh, yeah, using that bass line, really, just a different combination. So it matches well the one I was working with. I still have the same drums inside everything. Uh, and here I start using the, the saxophone, the trumpet player. It, so this program just has a bit of diffusion delay as well. Penned it all the way to the left there. Has some EQ as well because he recorded this session with a mouth, uh, with one of those mute things that you put on the trumpet. Sorry, I, I don't remember the name of that. So, uh, one of those things that you put on the trumpet on the front to kind of mute the volume. So he was playing with that. You end up not having a lot of bass in it. So I just used the EQ to bring up the mids. I love the way it sounds, the trumpet. I just wanted a bit more bass. So I just brought in uh, this EQ and pumped up a little bit of the low mids and the, and the, and the lows. Yeah, but then I created this sequence and it kind of flows well from one to the other. And I'm kind of seeing someone actually throwing some rhymes over this. Let's listen to it. So it then goes to, uh, to the chorus. I still need to put some more trumpets over this. And you can just play around with it. With... Also, one of the things I use normally, like in the trumpets, is that I put everything, so just select all and put everything into note on. So when you press the pad and you release the pad, the actual sound stops. It's quite useful because sometimes the sample has a lot uh, on it that you don't want to use. You just want to use maybe the, uh, the front uh, of the, the first bit of the sample. So that's how I use it right there. Uh, everything is into mono. Another thing that I like to do sometimes is actually keep this in poly so everything plays over each other but use the mute group one to put everything into mute group one. So it's actually acting as mono but it's not. And what this is good for is that you can overlay two sounds at the same time if you want. So because this, the, the program is set to poly but all the pads are set to mute group one. All the pads are muting each other. But if you want, let me go out of uh, all to current. So imagine I want to put these two playing together. I can bring out this one out of mute group. And now these two can play together because the program is set to poly. So it's just a technique that's really useful in case you don't use it. I think I've mentioned this in the past in one of my videos, but it's a really cool one uh, in case you use a lot of cuts like I do. This is one of the things that it's, it's a little uh, overwhelming is that you have a bunch of samples at a time. And I don't know if this would work on an MPC Live because you have a restriction to two gigabytes of RAM. I don't know how much space is inside this project, but because this is connected to the laptop, uh, you know, I just have 
I'm, I feel more comfortable bringing in samples. I bring a lot of samples in and just mess about with a lot of, sh with a lot of, uh, and just mess about with a lot of things. So that's it. Starting beats with the bass line. I'm actually, this is not the first one I've done. I've posted another one maybe on Instagram where I'm using bass lines like that. And it's just really cool. So yeah, you can find this on my band cam. I got the, the bass uh, pack right there, bass for days. You guys can go and grab that. That trumpet, uh, horn, those horns, the trumpet, that's on my Patreon for this month alone. But then I'll post it later on on Bandcamp. It's just going to be a bit more expensive. If you already have this, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, just enjoy it. Find. I think the best way to use these are to just, you know, find a combination you like. And stick with it. Put it over a beat and just you know find find some uh, samples that work with it, and you're pretty much done with mixing. I try to play as much as I can with uh, the stereo image, so put everything to the right left channel. Sometimes I put everything really extreme if I want to play with the levels. Very important to me. Mixing is more about levels and panning. If you need to put a compressor to tame down the sound, do that. But nothing extreme, and it's just the way I like to do it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the beat. And if you want to comment down below, let me know how you start your beats. Do you start the beats with the bass, with the drums, with the sample? I know a lot of people start the beats with the, with the samples. Uh, you know, just let me know how's your process of uh, making beats. Uh, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all your help on everything. Peace, thank you to all my patrons, and I'll leave you with a beat one more time. Peace. Thank you.